Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the new Dell XPS 12 today. This is a two-in-one detachable, as you can see, uh, from Dell. And for uh, the $1,000 price tag, you get the keyboard dock here along with the computer component. All of these are powered by a Core M5 processor. This is the new Skylake generation of Core M chips, so they're fanless, so you can get into this uh, kind of form factor. Uh, it doesn't get too hot, uh, but there's no noise or anything else like that while it's running. Uh, all models also have eight gigabytes of RAM, but there are some choices to make on the keyboard as well as the display, which might drive your cost in a couple different directions. Now, before we get into the review, in the interest of full disclosure, this was provided to the channel as a loaner from Dell. Uh, when we're done with this, we're going to be sending it back to them. No one is paying for this review to be made, uh, and every opinion you're about to see is my own. No one has reviewed this uh, prior to it posting except for me. You can read more about my uh, disclosure policy in the comments section below. And I should also add that Dell in the past has uh, provided equipment to the channel that we use as part of our production workflow. These were items that uh, we had reviewed from Dell previously, just so you're all aware of uh, what my relationship uh, is and was with Dell here moving forward. So this is what you get for uh, your $1,000 price tag. You get the keyboard dock here along with the display. Uh, this one that we're looking at is their 12 and a half inch 4K display. Yes, 4K on a 12 and a half inch screen. Uh, there's also a 1080p version, which is what you get for the $1,000 price tag uh, that is in the same form factor, just with less resolution. Now there is a price to be paid for the 4K. Uh, so it's about a two or $300 extra add on here to get the higher resolution. And it will also cost you battery life. So you're going to be uh, losing about an hour to two hours or more of battery uh, with the 4K versus the 1080p display. So Dell rates this at around uh, seven to eight hours if you are using with uh, the 1080p display doing web browsing and word processing and that sort of thing. Uh, with the 4K version here, uh, you're going to be looking at five to six hours. So a definite battery penalty because you're getting a lot more resolution with no more battery to back it up. So it's definitely going to be something that I would recommend more for someone who's using this docked in their office and uh, looking for an occasional device to walk away with versus uh, someone who wants to get all day battery life. You get closer to full day battery life with the 1080p version, uh, but definitely won't get that with the 4K. Now the keyboard dock is interesting because it's more of a cradle than it is a dock. Let me switch over to our other camera angle here. But what's cool is that they've uh, designed it in such a way that you can unfold it like you would a laptop. So you can see here, everything is uh, you know, pretty much pieced together here. There is a magnet that kind of holds it all together. It isn't hard to knock it off its magnet though. So you definitely want to be careful while you're walking around with it. Uh, they do give you a little wrap around uh, thing in the box here also that you can use to uh, protect everything that might hold it together a little bit better, but uh, you definitely want to be careful while you're walking with it. But the magnet generally will hold it in place. And then when you want to use it, you just kind of fold it up like so, and it will move itself into position. However, this is the riskiest component here because there's really nothing uh, guiding it in place here as you're moving it. Just risky in the sense that you could drop it if you move too quickly. So uh, you definitely want to be careful as you're folding it up here. Uh, once it gets itself into the dock, it tends to stay put. Although one thing I have noticed with it is that I occasionally have to kind of guide it into position to get uh, the pins on here to latch on. So it doesn't, it magnetically guides you to a degree, but sometimes you need to push it a little bit into the right position to get uh, everything to recognize itself. The keyboard is really nice on it though. Uh, backlit, uh, these are not quite full size keys, but they certainly feel like them. Uh, in some ways it reminds me of the old ThinkPad keys and how it feels. It really is a very nice responsive keyboard backlit with excellent travel despite how thin it is. So I think they said 1.9 millimeters of travel or something. So that is really well done. I am very fond of the trackpad on the base here. It's very nicely sized, especially for the size of the device overall. Uh, what was also really noticeable is how uh, low latency there is on gesture controls like two fingers scrolling. It really has no latency when you're uh, moving around with it. So it's really among the best uh, Windows trackpads I have used. And I've seen this now on, we're gonna look at another Dell in a couple of days. Uh, equally good. So Dell's done something right on these trackpads. That was one of the things I dinged them on last year uh, was their trackpads didn't feel much better than some of the other Windows trackpads out there. Now they do feel much better. So this is a really nice trackpad uh, as responsive to me as uh, the uh, touch screen is, especially when scrolling around. Now, I want to show you the uh, screen angle on the base though. So you'll notice that we're kind of locked onto this base here. Uh, we can't change this screen angle. We can't push the screen back any further, nor can we move it any closer to us. So uh, they kind of had to pick an angle that worked for most people and went with it. And if that's going to be a problem for you, uh, they have an option that will be coming out uh, soon after this video is posted. So this is a another keyboard dock that they're coming up with that uh, is thinner, uh, but it's 
actually equally comfortable to type on. I'm going to show you how this works. Let me pull out the uh, computer out of the other dock and we'll go switch it into this one here. And this one, uh, you just kind of uh, lay the uh, computer into the back of the dock here. It will uh, line up magnetically as the other one did. Uh, but this one has a kickstand on it, so you can actually just uh, grab this part here and push that out and then you can adjust the screen any which way you want. So it is a little bit more flexible. The problem is it doesn't work as well on your lap uh, as the cradle does. So you have to make a choice here. Maybe you can buy both keyboards if you want to do that. I think there's a price premium on this. So uh, if you wanted to go with this uh, particular uh, kickstand folio model, there's a little bit extra added onto the price of purchase, but you'll get this one with it instead of the cradle uh, or you'll be able to buy it separately. I don't have pricing on the uh, keyboard dock uh, yet at the time that I'm recording this review. Uh, when you're done with it, you can uh, just fold it back up also and get yourself into a little folio mode here as well. So a little bit more flexible, kind of in line with uh, some of the other uh, tablet two-in-one devices that are out there on the market and you do have a choice here. And that's one of those things with these two-in-ones. I think the industry is trying to figure out what people want. So to have a choice is a good thing. I would have liked this better if it worked better on the lap again because it doesn't lock in here. So you do kind of have to do a balancing act to use it as a laptop uh, when you're using it. But uh, the keyboard is backlit. Even though it has less travel, it is just as comfortable and the trackpad is equally good as well. So everything that was good about this one uh, is in here too. So you have those uh, options available to you and you can uh, flip it around and put it into multimedia mode if you want. Uh, you can also do the multimedia mode with the included uh, folio that they give you in the box, but you have to take the keyboard off first from it uh, and then use this thing with your tablet to kind of position it around into that position. So if you're looking to do more flexible tablet-y kind of things, uh, this other dock might be the one that's worth looking at. Now Dell has gone all in on USB-C on this device. So you've got two USB-C ports on here. Uh, these do everything from power to video output as well as device connectivity. Uh, they will give you a USB-C to regular USB adapter in the box for connecting uh, external hard drives or something you might have laying around. But really the standard is going in this direction now. We'll be seeing uh, these connectors moving forward. This also has Thunderbolt 3, which is another standard that's out there that uses the same connector. Uh, that provides high-speed connectivity up to like 40 gigabits per second. Uh, so you'll be able to have a single cable to use a docking station that will have all the things that uh, you might want to use on there. Uh, they also will sell you a little premium adapter here. I think this is about $75 or so. That gives you a gigabit Ethernet, another USB port there, uh, VGA and HDMI outputs too. And that again plugs right into uh, that port there. So these ports are going to be very flexible and that's why there's no other uh, video output or anything else on there except these two. So your power goes in there again, display everything else uh, through the USB-C ports. You also have a headphone microphone combo jack there, a micro SD card slot here with a door so you can stick a card in there and uh, secure it with the door there, a volume rocker. On the other side, you've got the uh, standby power switch and a lock for locking it down on a table or something. You can see what those pins look like at the bottom for connecting to its docks. And then there's also a capacitive Windows button here for pulling the start menu up. However, I found that I often hit that by accident when I'm holding it uh, in tablet mode. So I'm gonna look at maybe disabling that feature because it is, I mean, I'm, I am hitting it a lot more than uh, I would like to. Uh, you got a little uh, webcam here on the front for uh, conducting web conversations. I believe the front camera is a five megapixel camera and there is an eight megapixel camera on the back here. So uh, pretty much in line with what we've seen on other tablet devices. And overall, it's pretty lightweight. When you just have the tablet portion out on its own, it's about 1.75 pounds. It's about 740 grams. So uh, pretty lightweight, not as light perhaps as an iPad or something, but uh, lighter than a lot of other similar devices out there. Again, that's the trade-off between battery life and uh, and weight. Uh, when you have it docked with the keyboard base here, uh, you're looking at about 2.8 pounds, so under three pounds or 1.3 kilograms uh, when you have it configured like this. It's a little bit lighter with the other uh, keyboard dock, but not by too much. All right, let's take a look and see how it performs as a computer doing some real world tasks. So we'll begin with our usual web browsing experience here. Uh, we are connected via five gigahertz wireless AC down to my uh, basement here, so things do spring up pretty quickly. The Core M processor is a lot faster than uh, the tablet processors that you'll find on a lot of lower cost Windows devices. So you are paying a premium here, but uh, you are at least getting some premium performance as a result of that. So things do come up pretty quickly here. Uh, you are, of course, still dealing with all the ads and all the other junk that pops up, but uh, you know, web pages do uh, spring to life very, very quickly on here. And we are using a 4K display, so I may as well run some 4K video from my YouTube channel. So we've got a video running here. I'm gonna go full screen on it real quick here, and you can see uh, it's able to keep up pretty nicely with that. I'll turn the volume down. Uh, the speakers are actually on, the, on this are front facing. So you have uh, speakers on the 
uh, left and the right here so you get good stereo separation. Uh, not the best sound quality in the world, but better than many other tablet devices I have used. And uh, the 4K display really does look nice. And I never really thought you'd get much out of a 12 inch uh, 4K display, but when you're looking at 4K video very close up, uh, maybe, you know, when you're holding the tablet in your hands, it actually does look pretty good. So I have to say I'm uh, impressed with the uh, 4K image quality out of here. Pretty wide color gamut on the display. And the uh, display goes up to 400 nits also. So it's very, very, very bright. Uh, of course, that brightness will come at the expense of additional battery life, but when it's plugged in, uh, you can really turn that display up and get some really nice brightness to it. And on the Octane Benchmark test, which measures how well it can operate on the web doing HTML rendering and JavaScript and everything, we get a score of 25,257. And I'm going to compare that one to the ThinkPad Helix that was running with the prior generation uh, Core M chip uh, that came in around 23,193. So the new chip uh, offers a little bit of a bump in performance as we usually see from one generation of Intel processors to the next, so not too bad there. All right, let's take a look at Microsoft Word. I'll load up our usual template that we use for uh, judging its performance for word processing and desktop publishing. You can see it comes up very quickly. Uh, renders pretty nicely too, not as fast as some of the core i7 or i5 machines we might look at, but uh, certainly adequate for getting this kind of work done. We can resize our uh, images here. You can see how quickly text reflows around as we're moving things around here. So a uh, really good responsive uh, uh, performance here for this kind of work. And uh, this is a very nicely performing computer for this kind of stuff. So you'll definitely get really nice snappy performance in word processing, uh, even in Photoshop and some other things. Where you won't see that kind of performance though would be in video editing or things that really tax the processor. Because it lacks a fan, uh, what'll happen is, is the chip will regulate its, uh, its speed essentially to keep it from overheating. So if you're doing things like video rendering or a lot of heavy duty video uh, editing, uh, this is probably not the best platform for it because the uh, CPU can't cool itself in the process of doing that. Uh, but one of the things that you will gain with having a 4K display is that text is really sharp. It's really nice to look at uh, on this display given that you have so much resolution to play with and uh, when you can adjust your window settings to get everything the right size for what you want to look at. Uh, and it really is a, a nice screen to read from and also to write on too. And speaking of writing, there is an optional Dell pen that you can get for this device. It's about another $50, but there are configurations where you can get the pen bundled in. Uh, and it's not too bad. It's not as good as the Surface Pen. It does do adequate uh, wrist detection when the pen is close in proximity to the screen. So you'll see that little uh, cursor appear there. But once that goes away, if I accidentally hit the screen with my finger here, you can see things are drawing on there. So the pen really has to be close uh, for that wrist detection to work. But uh, it is passable as a writing implement, uh, just not as good as the Surface Pen is. Well, let's take a look now at some games. Uh, this is certainly not going to be a gaming powerhouse. Uh, but it can play some casual stuff, and we'll take a look and see what it can do. All right, just for the heck of it, I figured I would run Minecraft at 4K. As you can see here, we're at 3840 by 2160, and we're getting decent frame rates even at this resolution. So uh, almost 30 frames per second, sometimes hitting that mark in some portions of the game here. So you could definitely run Minecraft at 4K on a Core M. This is the original version, the Java-based version that everyone's running still, uh, and it seems to be working pretty decently. I did install the Optifine plugin to enhance its performance a little bit, so that uh, is giving perhaps a little bit of a performance boost here, but nonetheless, we are definitely getting a playable frame rate here. It'll certainly work better at uh, lower resolutions, but I did have a hard time getting it to run full screen at 1080. It's just the complexities of these 4K displays and getting everything configured the correct way. Uh, you could run it in a window and probably get uh, closer to 40 or 50 frames per second, if not a little bit more at 1080. Now more modern games are going to struggle though. So if we take a look at Rocket League, for example, uh, we are getting about 30 frames per second, give or take here, but I've also uh, turned down the resolution to 720p and uh, you know, tuned everything to high performance mode to give it a little bit better uh, performance here. So you're not going to get any kind of smooth frame rate without dramatically impacting the image quality uh, that you're going to see on the display. And uh, running 720p on a 4K display is a downgrade for sure. You're definitely going to notice uh, some pixelization and everything just because this screen is just so uh, high resolution that low resolution stuff actually looks bad. So uh, it's not going to be a good gaming platform for modern stuff. And the 3D Mark benchmark though shows us we get a score of 3,502. Uh, so it's definitely a faster GPU than we've seen on the prior generation of the Core M, uh, but again, still not up to par for modern games. 
So that is the Dell XPS 12. And what I really like about it is just how lightweight uh, and thin the tablet portion is. So it's not as awkward the hold as I've seen with other two-in-ones. A very lightweight, uh, very good grip on it. So it is metal, actually. It feels like plastic in, in both weight and how it feels. But what they've done is taken a magnesium alloy and put on this grippy uh, coating over it so you don't drop it as easily. So it's really good to hold on the hand. Uh, very lightweight and uh, not all that heavy. I'm not as crazy, though, about the keyboard cradle here. I'm often having a hard time uh, getting it to align and activate properly. So uh, you have to sometimes make some adjustments on there to get everything uh, locked in. So if you're not paying attention while you put it on, the magnets don't really guide you into position. You really have to make sure you've got uh, everything uh, going into the, the keyboard dock the right way to get it to uh, latch on there. I'm also not crazy about the fact that you can't change the screen angle on it either. So you're kind of stuck at this angle. And if you don't like that angle, uh, you need to do something else to get a more comfortable viewing angle. That might be uh, going with that keyboard folio that we talked about earlier. I do like this one a lot better than the one it comes with. I just wish it worked better on the lap. So you do have some choices to make and some compromises here or there to make depending on what your use case is. I do give you a nice little folio here to wrap it up with and it will uh, incorporate the keyboard also, but it does kind of slip off sometimes. So it's not the, the nicest uh, feeling case, but you do have something that uh, you can carry around with you if you're looking for something uh, to wrap it with, but uh, not again as nice as the folio. The last thing to think about on here is the screen resolution. So one of the issues that uh, you're going to get by paying more for the 4K display is getting a pretty significant uh, decrease in battery life. So I think you should really strongly consider uh, the 1080p version of this because uh, that will give you uh, pretty much a very nice high quality uh, display uh, yet with more battery life. Because really, unless you're holding that screen really close to your face, it's going to be hard to tell the difference on a 12 and a half inch screen uh, between 1080 and 4K. I think if you had them both sitting next to each other, uh, you could definitely tell the difference. But really for a device like this, uh, 1080p is is fine and you'll get a lot more battery life, which is something you'll want to have uh, out of a portable device and you'll save yourself some money too. So that's the Dell XPS 12. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.